see my head? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome back to Homebrewing with Corey and Laura. Hello. So, last video we left off, we dry hopped the cider and the beer. Uh, we let that sit for a week and then we put it into a tertiary or a third fermenter to clean out all the hops in lemongrass. And then we cold crashed it. We turned down the freezer to 32 degrees and that's where it sat for a week, hopefully to settle anything else up to the bottom. So we did the tertiary because if you remember all the hops that were sitting up here, I have tried to siphon this into the bottling bucket before, then you end up sucking hops into it, and then you end up getting hops into your bottles if you're end up, if you are bottling it. And it's not pleasant to get a mouthful while you're drinking your beer. So I decided to use a tertiary and they're in these plastic fermenters just because those are the ones I had around. No other reason, they're not any better or worse. I have heard stories about plastic ones getting scrapes inside them and stuff getting inside and contaminating the beer, but if you clean them properly and take care of them, you don't have to worry about that. People like them too because they're lighter and they don't break as easy as the glass ones, but I've had my glass ones since I started doing this. I never had a problem with them. They are heavier. But today we'll be putting them in the, the kegs, but first we need to flush the lines that go from the kegs to the tap. Uh, sitting in this keg right now is the PVW cleaner. Um, it's been a while since we've used the kegs, so we just want to make sure everything's nice and fresh. So we have to flush the lines that go from the kegs to the taps, and to do that I have this, and I have this beverage system cleaner, which it says to use a half an ounce, which we just measured is two, two capfuls. Put the two capfuls in here, just the same as same spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Fill the rest up with hot water. So I'm going to take my taps off here, which I have a spanner wrench for. These all have little holes in them to break them loose. take these and soak them in sanitizer while I'm cleaning the lines. So the way you do this is you take this thing, especially made for this, make sure the gasket's in there. It's just going to spray cleaner all over you. And this will thread directly into where your taps came out of. Make sure it's nice and tight. So as you can see over here, I hook this up to the left side tap, which is this hose, which we have hooked into the outside of our keg. This one here says in, and you can tell because the outside has a tube that goes all the way to the bottom. You can see right there. So now I just pump this, and it puts pressure in here, which forces the cleaner out through through the line all the way into the fermenter, pump the whole thing in there, it'll clean out the lines, everything in between. Yeah. All the way till it's gone. So here's the tap. Take that off. Unscrew it here. And pull this out. Stick it in the sanitizer. And there's the inside. Stick that in there. And I just let them both soak in there while you're cleaning the lines. I'll take this keg with the sanitizer in it, siphon it down into the other keg. Just 
So now that all the sanitizer is from this one down to this one, I'm going to take my top out of the sanitizer and put it on here to ensure that it stays clean. Alright, so I'm going to put these back together now. They've been soaking for a while. Just five minutes maybe is all you need. Just enough to ensure they're nice and clean. And you just put them back on. You just stir it on here. Use your spanner wrench, stick it in the hole, tighten them up. Now we're ready to sanitize the lines and the taps. I have my keg of sanitizer here. So you hook it up to the out line, the one that had the tube going all the way to the bottom so it sucks the sanitizer up all the way. Next we'll put the lid on. It's better to do this when it's mostly full of sanitizer so that you don't waste CO2. So if it's almost full there's a small space at the top for the CO2 whereas if it's empty you have to fill the space with CO2 first before it will come out. Left one, hook it onto the inside, and if you look in here, the way that I set this up is this side, this side are the same. Look over here, which is the left side is the left side hose is a left side valve. Everything left side is left side if you're looking at it from this side. Right side, right side, right side. So we have the left side hooked up to it. Make sure this tap is closed. Left side, left side, turn it on. Make sure your pressure's turned up. I got it at at about 15 PSI right now. Get something to catch your sanitizer in, like this movie tavern taker. And then just let it flow for a while. This is about 38 ounces, I believe. So that's, that's plenty. Next, I will switch lines. So now we will be on the right side. Do the same. Very important to make sure everything is nice and clean. We haven't used these since November or December, and now it's May. So these have been sitting for a good five months. It's so important that these are clean because whatever's been sitting there for five months could completely ruin your beer. So everything got flushed, everything got sanitizer. These soaked in sanitizer, we know everything's perfectly clean. And you can look close here. Look how much more settled out of this since we had the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary. We still have this much more stuff that's settled out of the bottom just from cold crashing it at 32 degrees in a tertiary. And this is my keg that had the sanitizer in it first, so we know this one's perfectly clean and sanitized. Take the lid off, you take your siphon hose, just got some sanitizer in there. Stick your finger over the bottom side, stick this in here. Always find it before you let it go, it's right there, so that you're not sucking straight off the bottom. And let her go. Before, when we have made this, we have not had the ability to cold crash anything or temperature control the fermentation. So this is the first time we've had that freezer and have been able to do that. 
So this, even though it's it's slightly cloudy, is super clear compared to what we've been able to do before. And we'll see the beer here pretty soon. To the bottom, tip it. Try not to get that bottom. All that everything is solid at the bottom. Alright, we're starting to suck up stuff off the bottom. So that's all we get. We ended up with a little less than five gallons, if you look in here. Actually, quite a bit less than I would have liked. Because every time you transfer it, you lose some. So, we started out with exactly five gallons. So what I've done before is buy six gallons, and then start with like five and a half in the first fermenter, but we just bought five for this. It's not a huge deal. So we have plenty for what we need it for. And this is the first time that we've been able to temperature control and all this. So hopefully it's delicious and we'll know for next time that we should start with a little bit more. Now since we got it in there, make sure your top's nice and sanitary. Stick it on there. Bring it over to the fridge. The right keg, the right tap, the right line. This is the right line for CO2. You hook that to in. The right tap. This to out. Alright, now let's do the other one. Take your siphon line again, a little bit of sanitizer in there. Now we're going to do the beer into the other keg that had the sanitizer in it. Bring it over the bottom side. Stick it in the beer. Find it right there. And there it goes. Ooh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's nice and clear. Beautiful, actually. <laughs> Hard to see. I can't see anything settled on the bottom. Actually, I can. Way down there. There's not as much as the cider. Just make sure you keep it far enough away from that. When it gets lower, tip it. Keep it up towards the top as far as possible away from that stuff to help ensure you get as much as possible. We got a lot more out of that one because it had a lot less sediment. But as you can see, we're still below five gallons. Five gallons is right at the top of this. We're about maybe four and three quarter gallons. We're pretty close on this one. So it's always better to start with a little extra, a little more than five gallons because you're going to lose some every time you transfer it. in that one. So I have this lid here which has a fitting on the top here. It goes down to this hose and it goes down to this carbonation stone which I believe is one and a half micron holes. I've had it for so many years I don't remember anymore. But do not, do not touch this either because the oils from your skin will clog this and you'll have to boil it. So, this has been soaking in the sanitizer for a while. Stick it in there. Put the lid on. So, this keg will be on the left side, which means I will need the left hose coming from the CO2. And instead of going in, dark in, I'm going to go into the carbonation stone, which will pressurize this. It will slowly, the CO2 will slowly bleed out of the stone into the beer and it will carbonate it. Now I will take the left side tap, which is this one, put it on the out side. Now come over 
here. So I had the left keg, the left hose is on. I'm gonna turn it up to about 15 PSI. So this should take about two to three days since I was able to ferment the beer and cold crash it in the freezer at 32 degrees. So it's at 32 degrees right now. Before I had that freezer, it was just sitting in the basement and it was fermenting at about 65, 70 degrees. And I'd have to put it in the keg and then put it in the freezer and fridge and let it cool down to about 34 before I could start carbonating it because it won't actually take the carbonation until it gets that cold. But now since it's already that cold, I turn it on right away. We'll start carbonating right now. I guess that about does it for kegging the beer. Um, we're going to clean up those tertiary fermenters real quick and we will get some reactions from our party which is next weekend, Memorial Day party, and see how people like the beer and the cider, which these people that are coming to this party have had these before, the old way that we used to make them, and we'll see if it is any better this way with the real oxygen, the controlled fermentation, the cold crashing, and see how the quality of the beer and cider improves. And then you'll clean these the same way that we showed you in the first video. Dump them out first. Stick them on here. Turn the hot water on. Whoops. Turn the hot water on. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I found that the opening on these are bigger than the glass ones. So, let me stick this down on here. You have to watch it or it'll go inside there. Ah! Alright. Anyway, you clean them the same way. You rinse them out. You put about a half a scoop full of PBW in there. goes in there, fill it up with hot water, and they clean the exact same way. And you just let them sit for a little while, maybe overnight. These don't get as dirty as the primary fermenter. So we're going to leave this video right here on tagging your beer. And uh, we will, we'll take some more video during the party and see how people like these beers, beer and cider. And if anyone has any questions, again, like I said before, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll do my best. I check them every day. I don't get very many comments, so I'm always looking forward to comments and questions. Ask me questions about this, anything you want to know, and I will check them, and I will reply to you for sure. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. That's it. Say things. You didn't say many things. <laughs> this is something else you can do. Um, we have these tap handles that have chalkboards on them. And this is the last one that I made for our s'more brown ale, which is a graham cracker brown ale that I put in some chocolate and some vanilla beans to kind of simulate a s'more. Um, we used to use regular chalk, but they always got brushed off when people walked by. These ones don't. These are our chalk ink board, chalk ink that we put on there. And it's fun to just make little designs on. I'll show you the one I come up with once I dry it. Beer. Beer! Beer. Alright, here's the tasting of the Strange Pale. Very good head. A little head on there. Yeah. Nice and clear. <laughs> I 
And now the cider, the hops and lemongrass. This one's my favorite. I'm surprised that that's got a head like that on it. I've never seen cider get a head like that. And that's not necessarily clear, but it's always been way cloudier than that. That's the clearest we've ever had it. This one's really good. This is a good trick. Use the oil. Have you ever seen that? Use the oil off your nose. Let's the head. Yeah. He's been drinking that all day. <laughs> all day long. This one's really good too. That's super clear. Look at that. You're supposed to look at it like at sun through sunlight, but there hasn't been any sun in Denver for the last three months, so that's the best we got right now. That's pretty good. If I put this light. With clarifier or not? Uh, this had had Irish moss in it, which is a clearing agent, but it's never been that clear because we weren't able to cold crash it before. Ta da! So after three weeks, that's what you get delicious alcohol. <laughs> Do it. It's delicious. <laughs> Look, I almost finished that whole freaking lap. And there's a kid. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Say hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Show everybody your baby. I thought he has his butt on his butt. You can't see it, it's black. Your baby's black. Ta da! Hunter said, Hunter said, hey YouTube! Ta da! Hey, there is some sun. Yeah, sun. Kind of looks like a hefeweizen. Okay. It's got a nice carbonation. You can see the bubbles popping out. I don't know if you can see it against my skin. I like can see it. This is way higher than not called alcohol. It's alcohol. Jesus. Holy crap, I'm drunk. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs>